the allotment for the tribe of Judah, clan by clan, extended down to the territory of Edom, to the desert of Zin in the extreme south. Their southern boundaries started from the bay at the southern end of the Salt Sea, crossed south of Scorpion Pass, continued on to Zin, and went over to the south of Kadesh Barnea. Then it ran past Hezron, up to Ader, and curved around to Karka. It then passed along to Asman, and joined the Wadi of Egypt, ending at the sea. This is their southern boundary. The eastern boundary is the Salt Sea as far as the mouth of the Jordan. The northern boundary started from the Bay of the Sea at the mouth of the Jordan, went up to Beth Hagla, and continued north of Beth Araba to the Stone of Bohan, son of Reuben. The boundary then went up to Deber from the Valley of Achor, and turned north to Gilgal, which faces the pass of Adummim, south of the gorge. It continued along to the waters of Anchemish, and came out at Enrogel. Then it ran up the valley of Ben Hinnom along the southern slope of the Jebusite city, that is, Jerusalem. From there, it climbed to the top of the hill west of the Hinnom Valley, at the northern end of the valley of Rephium. From the hilltop, the boundary headed toward the spring of the waters of Nephtoah, came out at the towns of Mount Ephraim, and went down toward Bela, that is, Kiria, Jearim. Then it curved westward from Bela to Mount Seir, ran along the northern slope of Mount Jearim, that is, Kesselon, continued down to Beth Shemesh, and crossed to Timnah. It went to the northern slope of Ekron, turned toward Shikaron, passed along to Mount Bela, and reached Jabneel. The boundary ended at the sea. The western boundary is the coastline of the Great Sea. These are the boundaries around the people of Judah by their clans. In accordance with the Lord's command to him, Joshua gave to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, a portion in Judah, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron. Arba was the forefather of Anak. From Hebron, Caleb drove out the three Anakites, Shishiah, Ahiman, and Talmai, descendants of Anak. From there, he marched against the people living in Deber, formerly called Kiriath Sefer. And Caleb said, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sefer. Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's brother, took it. So Caleb gave his daughter Aksa to him in marriage. One day, when she came to Othniel, she urged him to ask her father for a field. When she got off her donkey, Caleb asked her, what can I do for you? She replied, Do me a special favor. Since you have given me land in the Negev, give me also springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of Judah, clan by clan. The southernmost towns of the tribe of Judah in the Negev toward the boundary of Edom were Kabzeel, Eder, Jager, Kaina, Demona, Adida, Kedesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Ziph, Telam, Bealoth, Hazor Hadada, Kariath Hezron, that is, Hazor, Amon, Shema, Malada, Hazar Gada, Heshman, Beth Pilat, Hazar Shul, Beersheba, Biziathiah, Bela, Iam, Ezem, Eltolad, Kiesel, Horma, Ziklag, Medmana, Sansana, Labaeth, Shilam, Ayan, and Rimen, a total of 29 towns and their villages. In the western foothills, Eshtael, Zorah, Ashna, Zanoa, and Ganim, Tapua, Enam, Jarmuth, Adullam, Soko, Azika, Shearaim, Adathaim, and Gadira, or Gadirathaim, fourteen towns and their villages, Zenon, Hadasha, Migdalgad, Dilian, Mizpah, Jokthiel, Lakish, Bozkaf, Eglon, Cabin, Lamas, Kitlish, Gadiroth, Beth Dagon, Naama, and Makeda. 16 towns and their villages Libna, Ether, Asian, Ifta, Ashna, Nizib, Kiila, Axib, and Marisha, nine towns and their villages.
Ikrin, with its surrounding settlements and villages. West of Ikrin, all that were in the vicinity of Ashdod, together with their villages. Ashdod, its surrounding settlements and villages. And Gaza, its settlements and villages, as far as the Wadi of Egypt and the coastline of the Great Sea. In the hill country, Shamer, Jadar, Soko, Dana, Kiriath Sana, that is, Deber, Anab, Eshtema, Anim, Goshen, Holon, and Gilo, eleven towns and their villages, Arab, Duma, Eshan, Janim, Beth Tapua, Afika, Humta, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, and Zion, nine towns and their villages, Mayan, Carmel, Ziph, Jada, Jezreel, Jachtim, Zanoa, Cain, Gibeah, and Timnah, ten towns and their villages, Halho, Beth Zor, Gedor, Mera, Beth Anath, and Eltakon, six towns and their villages, Kiriath Baal, that is Kiriath Deirim, and Rabbah, two towns and their villages, in the desert, Beth Araba, Midden, Sekeka, Nibshan, the city of Salt, and in Gedi, six towns and their villages. Judah could not dislodge the Jebusites who were living in Jerusalem. To this day, the Jebusites live there with the people of Judah. The allotment of the descendants of Joseph went from Jordan by Jericho, east of the waters of Jericho, into the wilderness, going up from Jericho into the hill country of Bethel. Then going from Bethel to Luz, it passes along to Adaroth, the territory of Archites. Then it goes down westward to the territory of the Japhelites, as far as the territory of Lower Betharon. Then to Gezer, and it ends at the sea. The people of Joseph, Manasseh, and Ephraim received their inheritance. The territory of the Ephraimites by their families was as follows. The boundary of their inheritance on the east was Atherothadar, as far as Upper Betharon, and the boundary goes thence to the sea, on the north of Michmathath. Then on the east the boundary turns round toward Tanath Shiloh, and passes along beyond it on the east to Janua. Then it goes down from Janua to Adaroth, and to Naraha, and touches Jericho, ending at the Jordan. From Tapua, the boundary goes westward to the brook Kana and ends at the sea. Such is the inheritance of the tribe of the Ephraimites by their families, together with the towns which were set apart for the Ephraimites, within the inheritance of the Manasites, all those towns with their villages. However, they did not drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer. So the Canaanites have dwelt in the midst of Ephraim to this day, but have become slaves to do forced labor. Then allotment was made to the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Joseph. To Macher, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, were allotted Gilead and Bashan, because he was a man of war. And allotments were made to the rest of the tribe of Manasseh, by their families, Abiazer, Helek, Arishael, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemida. These were the male descendants of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, by their families. Now Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh, had no sons, but only daughters. And these are the names of his daughter, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Terza. They came before Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the leaders and said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance along with our brethren. So according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among the brethren of their father. Thus there fell to Manasseh ten portions, besides the land of Gilead and Bashan, which is on the other side of the Jordan, because the daughters of Manasseh received an inheritance along with his sons. The land of Gilead was allotted to the rest of the Manassites. The territory of Manasseh reached from Asher to Michmathath, which is east of Shechem. Then the boundary goes along southward to the inhabitants of Entapua. The land of Tapua belongs to Manasseh, but the town of Tapua on the boundary of Manasseh belongs to the sons of Ephraim. Then the boundary went down to the brook Kana. The cities here to the south of the brook among the cities of Manasseh belong to Ephraim. Then the boundary of Manasseh goes to the north side of the brook and ends at the sea. 
the land to the south being Ephraim's, and that to the north being Manasseh's, with the sea forming its boundary. On the north Asher is reached, and on the east Issachar. Also in Issachar and in Asher, Manasseh had Bethshean and its villages, and Ibliam and its villages, and the inhabitants of Dor and its villages, and the inhabitants of Endor and its villages, and the inhabitants of Tanakh and its villages, and the inhabitants of Megiddo and its villages, the third of Naphath. Yet the sons of Manasseh could not take possession of those cities, but the Canaanites persisted in dwelling in that land. But when the sons of Israel grew strong, they put the Canaanites to forced labor, and did not utterly drive them out. And the tribe of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given me but one lot and one portion as an inheritance, although I am a numerous people, since hitherto the Lord has blessed me? And Joshua said to them, If you are a numerous people, go up to the forest, and there clear ground for yourselves in the land of the Perizzites and the Rephraim, since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. The tribe of Joseph said, The hill country is not enough for us. Yet all the Canaanites who dwell in the plain have chariots of iron, both those in Bethshean and its villages, and those in the valley of Jerizal. Then Joshua said to the house of Joseph, To Ephraim and Manasseh, You are a numerous people, and have great power. You shall not have one lot only, but the hill country shall be yours. For though it is a forest, you shall clear it and possess it to its farthest borders. For you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have chariots of iron, and though they are strong. To the choir master, according to the Giddith, a psalm of the sons of Korah. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise, Selah. Blessed are the men whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion, as they go through the valley of Baca. They make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. Behold our shield, O God. Look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat at table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was sitting at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is, who was touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, What is it, teacher? A certain creditor had two debtors. One owed five hundred denarii, and the other fifty. When they could not pay, he forgave them both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one, I suppose, to whom he forgave more. And he said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears, and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? 
And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Soon afterward, he went on through cities and villages, preaching and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. One of our heart's deepest longings is for safety, security, and rest, for a place we can truly call home. The inventory of geographic locations here in Joshua gives the specific pieces of land that the different Israelite tribes and families will inherit. It is, in effect, the detailed specification of the land that the Lord promised to Abraham. These lands are given to each family in perpetuity, never to be taken away by creditors or enemies. This idea of having a true homeland and inheritance in the land is picked up in Psalm 84, which refers to the center of the promised land, the temple. It is your dwelling place, a home, a nest, your house. Later, when we find Jesus dining at the home of a Pharisee, a sinful woman steals the show by anointing his feet, and he sends her off forgiven and in peace. The Pharisee does not understand Jesus' actions, and even distances himself from the situation in his own home. The sinful woman finds her home in Jesus himself, and receives the security we all long for in his words, Go in peace. When have you experienced that sense of peace and home most strongly in your life?